And we are back. It's The Wild Times, episode number 45. If you're tuning in for the first time, that means that we have been doing this for 45 straight weeks. We have been polluting the airways with our nonsense banter, our garbage speak, and of course, a lot of useful wildlife news. I am your host, the broologist, Forrest Galante, joined tonight and always by the ever handsome Patrick DeLuca, Papa yes. P, Papa Pen Flicker, Popper, <laughs> Papa <laughs> Pee <Pee-pee>. Pee, <laughs> the producer. Patrick DeLuca, how are you, man? <laughs> oh, I'm good. I got rid of my pen. Saw Thank that. you for reminding me good every move. single week. Uh, good I'm move. Great. I'm great, Forrest. Feeling real good. Happy to be here. Good. <sighs> glad. I'm glad. And yeah. of course, the guy who I believe at this stage only owns one hat, because um, it's the only hat we've seen for 40 of the 45 weeks. Asuka. Mr. The, the professor himself, truly a PhD academic, a, a scientific mind like none other. Mr. Ratep, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. I'm much uh, in a better mood than I was our last podcast. There is no imposter top knots happening around here. We all have hats on and uh, couldn't be happier. Valentine's Day is coming up. Put out my dating tips on the YouTube. Fanfare galore. Mm. People love it. Mm. I'm hilarious. Thank you. Real quick, before we get into this pod, because I think this is important, the people want to know from... From a you know accredited scientific mind like yours, yes. what is the perfect date for Valentine's Day, Ritap? That is smart. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> first of all, it's staying inside and never going to a restaurant or anywhere outdoors on Valentine's Day. Getting a okay. gun and blowing your brains out. Um, <laughs> That's strange. Cheers, mates. That Just kidding. So Disclaimer. Morbid. No, don't do it. Don't do it. That's a bad tip. <laughs> no, say that on well, air. That's, I, it's, no, don't like do it. It was a joke, everybody. Calm down. God, you get canceled. <laughs> I, I gather, I gather, Recep, that you don't love Valentine's Day. I think that's what you're saying. I, I have yeah, this problem. I have this weird problem where obviously I've always hated uh, Valentine's Day and pretty much every holiday where there's giving and gifts. I don't hate the holiday. I hate the whole rigmarole around it and all the bullshit that you have to do. And Valentine's Day is one of these ones where I've always just like, you know, grip my teeth and get the bullshit, do the thing. And I hate it. And, uh, I think this year is going to be different. So uh, I think we're just going to stay in and have some Taco Bell and wine. Cheers. Okay. How about right. you, Forrest? What do you think the perfect Valentine's is? What do you, what are you Well, now do? that I'm depressed, thanks to Ritap's uh, <laughs> comments. Um, no, I look for me, Valentine's day is a time to not give in to the hallmark holiday pressure, do something out of the box, like set up, you know, I'll give you an example and and we can post this on the Instagram. A few, about four years ago, I went down to the beach at like 1130 AM on Valentine's day. And I dug out the most insane, uh, beach table setup so that at sunset we could do a picnic on the beach for Valentine's day. You know, a lot of effort. Picnic was simple. A lot of effort. A lot of effort. Picnic was simple. You know, it was like it was like Domino's pizza or something. But the amount of effort outdoors, not given to the Hallmark thing. That's that's my go to. How about you? Sure. Man, look, you want to talk about Christmas, Christmas gift ideas. You love Christmas. Uh, you know, I can get into that. I'm not the Valentine's guy. Uh, I well, forget we about suck, it. Don't we? In fact, you just <laughs> reminded me. <laughs> That's coming up, so I've got to get on that. Well, and it'll but, be over by the time this comes out anyway, so this is all <laughs> for naught. Hey, yes. Will, I just texted you a picture of the Valentine's... I'm so proud of it, that the Valentine's Day uh, rig that I built at the beach a few years ago, that it's definitely worth a little little pull-up for the Brosners that happen to be watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes, you can see my marvelous creation over here on the YouTube. Excellent. But alas, this podcast, well, it is segueing more and more into dating advice and uh, <laughs> true <laughs> lovemaking tips. God, uh, everybody's already stopped listening to this one. We like to talk about uh, what's in the news, wildlife, what's going on in the world of outdoors, nature, adventure, animals, yeah. all that shit. So yeah. let's f- let, me th- let me throw it to the resident broologist first. What uh, what's in the news this week, Forrest? Oh, man. Big, big piece of news in my world came out this week. Um, I posted about it on my socials. It was super exciting. It was a rediscovery. Now, anytime an animal that's presumed extinct, um, you know, happens to appear, 
happens to show itself, I get a little giddy. I mean, that's something that, you know, Patrick, you and I have, God, we've been working on that for a long time now. Um, and uh, the Pintabo volcano mouse in the Philippines was thought to be extinct for 30 years since there was a massive volcanic eruption in 1991 that was so big that it caused its own typhoon, um, wow. which just, you know, it created rain down ash, it devastated land, there were mudslides. Um, the, the ash that rained down was supposedly an inch thick across Oof. 1,500 square kilometers. I mean, it was like an Armageddon from this this crazy volcano. So naturally, they assumed everything in the vicinity was dead. And one of those things was an endemic mouse species that lived only on that volcano in the Philippines. And uh, and they just found one after 30 years. So it was uh, it was pretty awesome. So biggest piece of news for me this week. Yeah, look at it. Basically just looks like your household rat, but... You know, whatever. <laughs> it's still an animal that was gone for 30 years and then turned back up. It's got a bit of a kangaroo legs there. Very. It looks like it could jump if it wanted to. So they found just one of these and then... Nope. Found a good old population. Oh, wow. That's yeah. crazy. So these things are back. They're back for real. They're back. Yep. Nice. It was, it's kind of one of those hiding in plain sight things where... Nobody really thought to look. It was just kind of presumed that they were extinct 30 years ago because of the amount of ash and, you know, uh, coverage of the ground. And then, sure enough, a, a survey was done, and they're like, oh, my God, there's plenty of these guys around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the ash, you would think. You know, like when we were at Fernandina Island in the Galapagos, you know, when you're far back on the boat from the active volcano that the island is, you can just see the lava flows where they cut down through probably, what would you say, 75% of the island is lava flow, oh, yeah. and then 25% oh, yeah. is still green. It's just kind Ish. of luck of the yeah. draw when you live on a volcano. Right. It's like uh, totally. You know, yeah, I feel like uh, this is. I feel like this is something that would happen if I was the one making these calls. Like, yeah, they're they're gone. Then let's just not investigate this anymore. <laughs> they're definitely gone. And then, I think that's right. And then I think somebody would call me on my bullshit with a news article several years later. <laughs> it's best left so unsolved. Speaking of calling you on you. Yeah, yeah. speaking of calling you on your bullshit and news articles, Ritep, yeah. I don't think we've heard a good piece of news from you in a hot sec. What's come across your fine plastic desk lately? Well, the only thing that's come across my desk that's interesting is in this document that Will puts together because I am not, my desk is terrible and it sucks. So um, there was a plane in Singapore that had to have an emergency landing because the uh, the attendant saw smoke in the cabin. Oh, you yeah, got to I mean, land. If there's yeah, smoke I mean, got, in the cabin, the plane's on fire, you land. It, th yeah. And, I mean, what do you guys think it could be? It could be... This, so this is an animal podcast. What do you guys think it could be? Singapore? Yep. I've been to Singapore. Everyone was smoking on the flight. Guaranteed cigarette <laughs> smoke. <laughs> nice. I'm going to say that a, uh, a flock, they upon takeoff, they, a pelican got lodged in the engine and eventually got sucked into the blade and got and caught on fire. Very close in that it is animals. It was actually, uh, it turns out that it was just uh, sheep farts. Sheep farts what? from the over 2,000 sheep that were on board. And um, yeah, so I mean, the, these, uh, they had how to, it ground, smoke? it grounded. How does, how does a sheep farting create smoke? Well, so it was an it's indication of, of smoke. So, so they got an uh, alert so the that there was smoke. Off. Yeah, ah, the alarms went off. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, right. okay, that makes sense. I mean, because think about it. it. Methane is released from, uh, from a fart, right? So if you yep. have 2,000 gassy animals farting underneath... <laughs> Uh, that's a, I, I shocked that the methane didn't methane detector didn't go off sooner. Yeah. Seriously. Well, all the sheep are safe. T t all two thousand one hundred eighty six of them. Though, uh, as the article says, maybe Singapore Airlines needs to have a talk with some farmers about the sheep's diets. Which is. I'll I'll, t I'll tell you what, man. The <laughs> I, if Such I a buy a joke. ticket, if I buy a ticket, so Singapore is like a very wealthy. City. It's yeah. a city, mm -hmm. but it's also a country, I guess. This is a very wealthy. You've been there a couple times for us. Yeah. Um, Love it. Very like, it's, it's kind of like a high end city, right? It's like going to Tokyo yeah. or something. Very it's, modern. Yeah, hmm. it's, in, it's the most modern place. I haven't been to Tokyo, but it's the most modern place I've ever been. Like everything is flawless and perfect and spotless. And they integrate yeah. nature with the buildings. There's like trees growing out of buildings in like the most manicured, perfect way. It's the place that they have those sky trees. 
those light up sky trees that everybody's seen on Instagram. It's, inc- yeah. it's insane. It's an incredible place. I, uh, I mean, if I'm buying a ticket on a plane, I believe that they should have to disclose that 2,186 sheep will also be traveling <laughs> on this flight. Like, I don't, I don't know if people knew. No, that, that, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I can't believe you, you know could that? carry that many. How do you carry that's, that's that's a, sheep? I mean, they're also, mostly that one person's cool. luggage. Because that's a huge, <laughs> yeah, that's it's a, a big huge airline fee. ticket. Yeah, that's a big bag fee. <laughs> yeah, by, by the way, you're paying, we're paying for the uh, gas for that flight and our ticket fees. Come on, what are these sheep aren't fucking paying for it, obviously? <laughs> Dude, I wonder if you could power the plane. Like, if you put Elon Musk on this and yeah, you're like, yo, let's power a 747 with sheep farts. Yeah, he I could bet do it. he could do it. He could do it. Yeah, there's yeah. no doubt. If you're listening. Yeah, and that stock would skyrocket. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, Man, Elon, I, if you're listening to this, you know, yeah, your, right? here, take your shot. Animal farts I, what did is you the think way of the future. The, what did you think of the people in Singapore? Because, like, I traveling through Thailand and Vietnam and Laos and a lot of places over there. I've never been to Singapore. Every, I always become friends with people from Singapore when I'm traveling through Asia. I, I love every person from Singapore that I've met. Yeah, I had nothing but positive interactions. You know, I was there with Animal Planet the last time doing an exhibit. And, you know, I met a ton of, ton of local representatives that were putting the exhibit together and, you know, facilitators and stuff like that. And it was, it was a nonstop social hour. Like the whole five yeah. days I was there, they, they, were, they were planning on flying me in and flying me out 24 hours later. And I was like, what? No, I'm going to Singapore. I'm going to stay for like five days. And it was exhausting because I'd wake up in the morning. I'd have like four text messages from my new Singaporean <laughs> friends who'd be like, let's go to breakfast. Let's go to brunch. Then let's grab coffee. Then let's get a beer. And I'd be like, all right, fuck it. Let's do it. So oh, it was just man. like. It was the most awesome, like, five days of social hour that would start around, like, 8.39 in the morning and end around 2 a.m. the whole time. And it was super fun. Everybody was super cool. The food was incredible. The food scene there was insane. Mm -hmm. Um, So we just, like, go out, drink all night, eat. I mean, it was super cool. Singapore is an amazing place. Yeah, those were the days, man. I'm I'm just reminiscing about, like, my last big social outing, and it was, like, over a year ago. Just like, oh, right. God, man. Isn't that crazy? You, you, you can't Dude. take that shit for granted, man. When that starts happening again, I'm going to enjoy every every damn one. I can't even remember the last time that I, like, social hopped. You know when you go out to a night at a bar and you're like, oh, here's this group of Santa Barbara's small, right? L.A. might be a little bit different, but it's like... I'll go out on State Street, our only street where shit happens here, and I'll start with one social group, and then I'll social hop over to the next group that I pick up. You know, I'll start with my rugby friends, then I'll meet up with my spearfishing friends, then I'll <laughs> run into some old college buddies. You know what I mean? I'll, yeah. I will, I will co-mingle with 200 people, <laughs> not to mention all the anonymous strangers that are grinding against everybody else. I can't even remember what that's like. Like, I don't no. even remember the last time that happened. Nope. It just kind of fades Dude. from your memory, and then, and then you're just like, God, man, I would... Yeah, that's like what it was like for me in, in college, just, you know, bar hopping and doing oh, all that, that shit. Four years of that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. something came Great. across my desk. Uh, Will, if you can pull up the video uh, from Romania, number 10 on the show doc. So I was in Romania last December. Uh, cool place. Spent some time in Transylvania, up in the Carpathian Mountains there, home of Vlad the Impaler. People, we, we hung out. We had some a couple dinners at locals' houses and stuff. People interact with bear a lot there, right? Okay. And they have brown, brown bear in Romania. 60% Makes of sense. all of Europe's uh, bear are in clustered in the Carpathian Mountains. There's a Romania. massively, not to dog like your story too much, but yeah. there's a massively successful Netflix natural history thing that's just come out called Wild Romania. And I had no idea Romania was so full of wildlife. Wow. Yeah, up in those mountains, it, it's weird. Romania is actually a little bleak. To be honest, like when you're in the cities, yeah. um, it's not like, you know, you think Bucharest, it's this big city and it's not like Amsterdam or, or, you know, London or Paris. It's, there's a little bit of a bleakness to it. Maybe it's cause I was there in the winter, but up in the mountains in Transylvania, that's where all the wealthy Romanians have their vacation homes. It's Makes gorgeous sense. and just pine okay. forest forever. But okay. a video surfaced this week of a skier. And I don't want to hear my own voice too much, but I, uh, let me set this up for you. No. So before, before you play this, Will, so I, years ago, before I ever started skiing, I watched a movie um, where three skiers get stuck on a chairlift while they're going to be shut down for a couple days. So they're like on this chairlift, they're freezing to death, wolves are circling them. Jeez. Um, 
in the movie, one of the guys gets down successfully and he's basically trying to outrun this pack of wolves on his snowboard. So every single okay, time I'm gnarly. skiing, yeah. every time I'm skiing in an area where I know there's bear, I envision <laughs> myself getting chased by a bear. And for like 30 seconds, I'll just bomb down the mountain and just pretend I'm getting chased <laughs> yeah. by a bear. It's like a fun game. Yeah, it's this a game guy, we all play when we're kids, when you run up the stairs and you don't want to be caught by the monster coming around the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. totally, totally. So look at this video here for those on YouTube. A Romanian skier is, no joke, getting full-on charged and chased down the ski slope by a brown bear. I mean, and the bear is on his <laughs> oh, fucking yeah. ass. The, the bear is booking it. Oh, my God. That's not going in to say hi. Like, that's uh -uh. like, I'm catching you and no killing mock, you. No, yeah, mock, no charge mock charge there. Yeah. No, straight up. That's, that's full on. My God. Oh, Look my it. God. It's gaining ground, it appears, on the guy. Good thing he was a good skier, because if that was me, I would have been like, fuck, 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 wiped out, and the bear would have had me. No doubt about it, because I'm not that good uh, on oh, the snow. Oh, man. <laughs> and, you know, the, the easiest way to fall skiing is looking behind you. Of course. Oh, yeah, man. of course. Which I, I would be that when I went skiing. looking the whole time. <laughs> I'd yeah. be staring at that bear. <laughs> well, you'd be looking, and then you'd be on the ground, and then you'd be eaten. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's wild. That is but, wild. Like, what do you do in that situation? Because I'll ask you, Forrest. What's, how good are you at skiing? Uh, I'm a, I'd say I'm a 7.5, 8 out of 10 at snowboarding. I no idea okay, about skiing. Snowboarding. So yeah. <laughs> you're on your snowboard. A brown bear, you know, an 800-pound grizzly bear, essentially, is chasing you. <laughs> Where's the balance between skiing fast to stay right. away or snowboarding fast to stay away from it, but also not going too fast that you get out of control and wipe and then you're well, fucked. that's the thing at, at a, at a, you know, my, my level being a seven or eight out of 10, like I will, I'll hit every run. I'll do a few jumps, whatever, but I'm never just, you know, like going straight down the slope, nose down. Right. Like I'm always carving, you know, like there's no point at which I'm just you know, maybe for like 50 yards and then I'm back to carving. Right. So, and I know how much speed I pick up in that, in that 50 right, yards right. on like a blue going straight. So I don't even fucking know what I do because I'm not that confident going, you know, 40 miles an Bombing. hour on a snowboard. Yeah. No, I'm really not. I start getting speed wobbles. My knees get shaky, you know, all that good stuff. Like I, I, I'd be fucking terrified. I'd be more scared <laughs> yeah. of falling and the speed at which I was going on the snowboard than the bear chasing me. Well, so you you, you <laughs> right. just have to keep speed. The bear can run. At, its top speed is what, like 40? But, like, if it's hauling ass after you for, like, a minute, it pro it's probably going, what, like 25 think, miles an I think hour? A top, I think brown 35. bear top speed's 35, yeah, yeah. And then it's going downhill, so call it 40. Brutal. You're still talking about going 40 miles an hour on a snowboard or skis. Yeah. I'm guessing I usually average around like 25. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. would you would have to point your board pretty pretty straight down and just go. Yeah. Try and get yep. some distance and hope the goddamn thing stops. Right. My, yeah, uh, I see no other option. My first time skiing, I was with Pat, and um, I, yeah, I was... <laughs> <laughs> I actually like the way he tells this story because he tells everybody I mean, whenever I had, skiing comes I up. I have the best POV, man. Tell, tell him. Let, so let, I, let me set this up. Yeah, set this up. Yeah, it's it's pretty it. good and painful. You're going to like this for us. So <laughs> I take Peter up, and we just go up to Big Bear, uh -huh. north of California. It's a, you know, a nice small mountain. It's easy enough, yeah, whatever. I love Big Bear. So <laughs> we get up to the cabin, and I'm like, so did you bring your ski stuff? He's like, no, I just got my jeans. <laughs> So he was just planning luckily, to ski in his jeans. Luckily, the cabin uh, had all of the necessities. Aren't you from the Midwest where it's nothing but snow? Yeah, there's snow, but it's also just flat. I mean, if you go to Wisconsin, there's right. a few places, but it's okay. flat. So okay. anyway, I'd never he, seen him. Luckily, the there was some extra gear at the cabin. <laughs> Peter mm -hmm. gets kitted out. Looks like a real pro. <laughs> we go up. It's it's him and his ex, and. Uh, they're, they're, they didn't want to do a lesson, so we're just kind of dicking around on the bunny hill. He stays down with her, and we ski a bit. I come, I meet them. They're like, yeah, let's try it. Let's do, the, let's do a lift. We'll go up. And so mm -hmm. we go up, and it's like a blue, right? Like yeah, all of blue. Big Bear is like a blue run, so an, an intermediate yeah. run. Right. So I'm with them, and I'm like, hey, so I'm going to ski kind of down to there, and then I'll stop. There's quite a few people on the mountain this day, right? So I, I bomb down, kind of stop. I look back up, and all of a sudden, Peter goes first. He starts coming down. And I'm looking at him. I go, oh, he's so full of shit. He's an awesome skier <laughs> because he's skiing at three times the speed of anyone else on the mountain. Right. 
<laughs> and about three seconds into that, I go, oh, he has zero clue what he's doing and has no chance of stopping. So yep. he is, his skis are pointed straight down the mountain. He's picking up, he's accelerating and picking up speed like an Olympian. And there are little kids and he's like literally going up on one ski to avoid a little kid here, going up on another ski to avoid an old woman there. And I'm just watching in horror until all of a sudden he's cartwheeling sideways yeah. across the mountain into uh, the guard fence. Out come, <laughs> I thought he was off dead. Comes, off comes the hat, gloves. They're, they're, they're significantly far away. The earphones are out. Uh, just The skis just a, are off. To, well, and then the ski... And listen, I'm, I'm not no graceful... I'm no graceful uh, pig here, but I... I got the wrong, they gave me the wrong size skis and then it was broken also. And the, I'm sure it was broken after that. No, the ski <laughs> fucking came out. That's why I felt I had to be, I had to be carted down by a snowmobiler. I'm pretty sure. Right. No was, way. Or wait. Oh, that might've been my first snowboarding uh, excursion. Yeah. You didn't I, I think carted. I was able to get down on the skis, but wow. th that was it. I spent the rest Nobody of the day. Nobody taught the you to, to pizza and French fry, huh? No, there was there was yeah. nothing. Not even Papa P. I think he just thought it was it would be hilarious if I went. It sounds like it was. It sounds okay. worthwhile. In my defense, I did show them a little bit, and his ex very appropriately, very slowly carved her way down without a single fall because she listened. Whereas Peter's like, I'm just gonna do what I do. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, what I said uh, before. before got some... I put the ski into the snow. We got some Brosner DMs that I thought I would uh, throw at it. you guys. I thought yeah. this one was pretty cool. This is from Dr. <laughs> well, based on his handle, I'm not sure. But Dr. Dr. Crypto Naturalist says, Yo, bros, I've studied mm. Loch Ness. Talking about the Loch Ness Monster quite a bit. And I believe that the sightings of humped, large, smooth-bodied animals and misidentifications are misidentifications of the large gray seals that are known to come in from the sea from time to time. When people report seeing multi-humped animals, I believe it's just a small group of seals swimming together in the lock. <laughs> Love the pod, bros. What do you think of that? Hmm. What do you think of that case of mistaken identity? It's a hell of a call. That's a hell of a call. What? I'm just trying to think. I mean, what seal species are there in Scotland? I mean, there are some. There's, there are gray seals, like he's saying. There's harbor seals, too. But mm -hmm. isn't Loch Ness... It's, it's like pretty far in, I, I don't know, but I assume it's pretty far inland and not connected to the ocean. Well, he's, uh, it's he's an interesting saying, theory. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the other thing he, is, are there no, I mean, if that was the case, wouldn't there be more photographic evidence and like legitimate pictures or am I uh, mistaken? Because I, I mean, when I well, look up these pictures out, yeah, he's saying that they do come in. Uh, yeah, but they still have to travel by waterway, right? And now I get it, like a gray seal might come into an estuary, you know, something like that. But all the way into, I, I, now I have to look up whether oh, this, Loch Ness is inland okay. or not. Will, Will, Google uh, seals in Loch Ness, the first Google image. This is very compelling. This is Ooh. really fucking cool. So it's three seals. Two of them are sort of jumping, so you only see their arc, and then one's head is out, and it looks like a 30-foot-long snake. It's very, very cool, actually, if, if Will pulls his thumb out of his anus. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. It, the lo Loch Ness is look very much so connected to the sea. All right, hold on. Let me get look. Look at this photo oh, yeah, that Will just that. pulled up. Oh. Interesting. I and mean, you see that from far away, dude. It's a good yeah, theory. It's a Loch Ness. looking at this picture. Yeah. Very much so looks like a sea serpent with the two coils coming out of the water, the head popping up. Interesting. Hey, you know, I think that uh, I think that the that um, Dr. Crypto Naturalist might be onto something here. I mean, if you saw that, if you were an ancient mariner, not ancient mariner, even if you're just it was a little dark out and you saw that from far away. I, I can't imagine you'd be like, oh, there's three seals perfectly positioned no. to trick my In this eyes. Lake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, 100 percent. No. I completely agree with that. Look, I've been out, you know, I spend thousands of hours a year out on the water and we're always looking for splashes and, you know, anything, any signs of fish or whatever. And I have seen a, I, I'm not kidding. A thousand times I've mistaken a seal for something else. 
oh look there's a shark fin oh look there's a there's a whale breach oh that must be a pelican dive oh was that an orca you know whatever and it's a seal or a sea lion I, i'm not kidding it must be a thousand times and i'm not the only mariner that's ever done that you know <laughs> right. like it happens right. it happens to everybody so especially it's one of those things too like when you think Loch Ness, which is essentially a lake, you know, you're not thinking seals. Like, that's not going right, on in your right. brain, right? So when you see something, when you see that pattern, that splash out on the ocean, you go, ah, you chalk, your, your mind instantly goes to seals. You're like, oh, it must have been some seals, must have been a sea lion, whatever. When right. you're looking at a lake and you see that, that, that thought doesn't even cross your mind. You don't go, oh, there were seals in this lake in the middle of the country. No. no they never, yeah, that never even goes through your brain. So instantly you try and associate that with something like the legend. So, yeah, I think, I think he's onto something. I think that's, a, that's pretty accurate. Well, it goes, it goes back to the, what we've been talking about in the cryptid game uh, in the daily videos we've been putting up where uh, so not only do you have the natural, the natural human psychology of I want to make – this like uh, this story epic and this talk about how I saw this cool thing. You also have behind that uh, motivating you the fact that the, the that you would never suspect it would be seals or anything like that. So it's like you're right. even more encouraged. And then behind that, you have the mythology of the Loch Ness monster. So you know, which all started by the way with that one photograph, which was debunked a year later, and the the creature was. Uh, they they figured it was like three inches big or something, and it just right. perspective of that very famous uh, Loch Ness photo. The one that like you know the little neck sticking out of yeah. the water. That one. Oh, yeah. interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm. So. Okay. You know. All right. Yeah, here's another one. This is this is from uh, Thompson Jake One. I, this is a really good one. This is a good sort of would you rather. Would you rather take on four hippos? that are the size of a wolf or one wolf that's the size of a hippo? Yeah. Um, me? <laughs> Go I'm, ahead, Ruth. Yeah, I had to think about it for a second. I'm going it's with really one tough. wolf. I'm going with uh, one hippo-sized wolf just because, I mean, there's one, and then I can maybe figure out some way to, like, get away from one. But if there's four... Like, you're fucked. I mean, <clears throat> you're running away. You're probably getting attacked by the other three. There's just no way to get away. Okay. Okay. Go Patrick, ahead you want to weigh oh, in? You man. want me to go? I just think uh, there's no good answer. I mean, my <laughs> official answer would be no good I'm answer. just going to take the four hippos because I just think if you had a wolf the size of a hippo, what possible thing could you do to get away from it besides climbing a Nothing. tree? I mean, it, it, you're, yeah. you're so fucked. Right. If a 2,000 or 4,000, 6,000 pound wolf. Nah, you're, you're, you're so fucked. I'm going. So the question here is would you rather take one wolf the size of a hippo or four pigs? Because that's basically <laughs> what a hippo the size of a wolf is. So I'm, right. I'm definitely going with the four little pigs because I feel like four, four mini hippos. I mean, <laughs> hippos are terrifying because of their mass. Like, that's what makes them their mass and their size. Four of them the size of pigs. Like, don't get me wrong, a wild pig will fuck you up, but I can at least kit, drop kick a couple in the head. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not challenging. A, a wolf-sized hippo would be the... That would be the dominant creature on this planet in <laughs> under 15 minutes. Get like, out I, of here. Yes. Just, there's nothing that could you stop. You guys are a couple of pussies. I, I'm Ugh. taking this wolf on. You ever seen Star Wars where they, they, they lasso it by the feet, the big robot thing that's shooting lasers? Knock it over, it's dude. It's not moving like a robot. It's not <clears throat> moving one super slow step at a time, Retep. This is a a wolf the size of a hippo. Come on. Get out of here. You're done. <laughs> also, if you lassoed a 6,000-pound wolf... With a chain. It would just... Oh, I didn't know you were carrying a super strong <laughs> chain around because you're a mid-shoreman. Yeah. Uh, all right, last one here, Forrest. Hey, sure. guys, something came to my attention. I'm curious about this. is from Autumn Bell 45 I've actually never heard of this animal. The Jagarundi, mm -hmm. it is on the endangered species list and said to be extinct in Texas. It was mainly found in South Texas, but I came across some supposed sightings in a small town outside of Austin called Lago Vista. Anyway, thoughts or uh, is there any other information that, that you could offer for us about the Jagarundi? Do you know much about it? 
I know a lot about Jagarundi. Super duper cool animals. Will, feel free to pull up a pic of one. Um, here's the thing. Jagarundi have known to be, to have been extinct in, in Texas since like the 1980s, I believe. But they're pretty damn common in Mexico, right? And they're a very transient animal. It's kind of like the jaguars in Arizona. Um, mm. So there's no, what, what would stop one of these little guys from hopping through the border, you know, up into Texas and then dipping back down into Mexico? Uh, because they are, like I said, they are common in northern Mexico, um, you know, and all the way into um, Central America. So I know that technically they've been declared extinct in Texas. I I wouldn't be surprised if you were able to find remnant traces of them visiting. It's kind of like mountain lions on the East Coast. It's like we know that mountain lions have traveled through states and have covered throughout the United States. That doesn't mean that they're living in those places or that they're residents there. And I think that's kind of the story here. Like the Jagarundi got this rap as being extinct in Texas in the 1980s. The truth is we don't really know if there was ever a large population of them there. They're a transient animal that probably come in and out between Mexico and Texas. So, yeah, I totally believe that, uh, you know, that Autumn, Autumn Bell could have found traces of a Jagarundi. I, I, it's probably a super cool rare sighting, but I, I believe it. That is a cool looking animal, by the way. That's super Very. cool looking. Very different than just like a jaguar, or a, a, a mountain lion or something like that. Yeah, no, they're they're super neat. I've seen them in South America. They're very shy and elusive, or not South Central America, and cryptic and super super neat. It's got like a regular cat sized head, <clears throat> and then just a, a wild animal sized body, a wild cat sized body. They've got beautiful faces too. I don't know, Will, if you can find a better picture um, of the head, but very beautiful faces. Um, yeah, they really don't look like any other feline that we have in North America at all. You know, like, there you go. Oh, wow. Like a bobcat and a mountain lion, you know, oh. have very similar characteristics. This this guy does not share those characteristics. I got to say, it's it's awfully cute. I yeah. would like to give him a little scratch on the chin. Yeah, just right where that one rogue whisker is hanging out. Just a yeah, little, right? Yeah. Just give him a little tickle. See what he does. Yeah. A little tickle. A little tickle. <laughs> Well, that's good. I like all those Brosner DMs. Um, wait, you know, wait, one, one more. The, oh, oh, please. Sorry, Forrest. Yeah. No, I thought you were no. going to move on. I, I do want to ask you a personal I was. question here. Tell me more. Steve2311. Steve. Hey, I'm a big reader of men's health. I, I made that part up, but that's the context with which Steve asks. Okay. Has anyone asked Forrest what happened with his men's health photo shoot? <laughs> were they able to use the photos, or was he just too sunburned? Uh... <laughs> That's funny. That's a funny question. That shows you're really listening along there, Steve. Um, <laughs> actually, Men's Health kind of burned... Oh, sorry, guys. I went too far from the mic. Men's sorry. Health kind of burned me um, to flip that switch because they, they were like, yeah, we really want to do this. Like, let's do this shoot, blah, blah, blah. Let's go. And then they were just like, yeah, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. And then it never came out. So I think they probably looked at it. We're like, we're not putting this fucking beat red guy in our magazine like this, <laughs> this is a mess like we can't do this and then they didn't want to like upset me or offend me so they were just Dude. like yeah no any day now it's coming for sure and uh eventually i was like all right this is not happening and i just gave up on that whole thing Dude, you you oh, were working shit. so hard weren't you working out like twice a day three hours a day fucking getting up in oh, the yeah. morning wow. oh yeah God. it was fun that's, i mean it wasn't fun but it was fun that's vicious that they didn't yeah. put it out Oh, yeah, well, I mean, whatever. you know, what's the worst that happened? You just got in real sweet shape. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It wasn't, true. wasn't the worst thing in the world. Well, actually, um, the worst that, that happened is you sat out in the sun and got extremely sunburned in preparation <laughs> for the did. photo shoot. <laughs> I really did. And yeah. now you have probably melanoma. But uh, can we get it, these yeah. pictures then? If they're not going to fucking post them, let's get them. We'll use them on the wild times, and for that's sure. that. Yeah, for sure, Peter. I'm definitely going to send you pictures of myself <laughs> shirtless can, sunburned. That seems them. like a good use of those. You can curate them yourself. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, right. Send, send them over. Views, it. I'll Photoshop in some six-pack lines for you. you Thank know. you. Yeah. I tried to put them in with the sunscreen, but then I just had white abs and a red body. It didn't work very well. <laughs> Dude, I got to tell you. So I was <laughs> filming something. Uh, I was... In addition to doing the wildlife stuff, sometimes for fun, I'll do so, like these, uh, like like TV movies, right? Like yeah, scripted yeah. stuff. And there's supposed to be this uh, scene where the guy who's like the male love interest kind of comes in with his shirt off and he's 
you know, being sexy, whatever. And the lead actor, while uh, basically a young Tom Cruise in the face, just kind of didn't have like a great bod, you know? Okay. <laughs> so I asked, I asked our, uh, our makeup girl, I was like, hey, can you um, like just like do some makeup contouring on his, on his body? It was unbelievable what you can do with a little bit of shading. Oh, it made a big difference? Oh, insane, dude. She, no like, way. I thought you were going to say it was like a disaster, like he no. looked terrible. Oh, no, it worked. Wow. She took she took a little paunchy sort of Mr. Burnsy looking bod, <laughs> and like he had like nice pecs and abs. Like it really made no me way. wonder about some of our uh, some of our hunky male actors that we're used to seeing with their shirts off. I was like, you just sure. You just, you just did like three years of working out in 30 minutes with that contouring. <laughs> That's great. You got her That's number? That's crazy. I had no idea. Yeah. I, I, it's not something that ever crossed my mind, I say, as I lie about my men's health photos. No, I'm just kidding. But I, <laughs> I, 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 um, I, didn't, I never thought that you could paint on muscles and that it would work without like adding prosthetics. That's interesting. That was brilliant. And I'm going to do it next time I go to the beach. Smart. You've been doing it Smart. for years, mate. Four um, years. Nice. Well, I was going to move on. Those were good Brosner questions. Keep them coming, Brosners. Um, but I was going to move on to a pretty fun little segment hmm. that people like. They ask for more and more. A little yeah. bizarre animal of the week. Nice. Oh, yeah. Thank God. Yeah. It's a good yeah, one. That's dead. It's a good one. All right. Here we go, gentlemen. All right. I'm going to start you nice and slow, baby birds. All right. Nice and easy here. Mm. This animal, this bizarre animal of the week is nocturnal. Peter, that means it comes out at night. Okay, comes out at night, nocturnal, got it. Yep. All right. It's a carnivore, which means it eats meat. Okay, I so knew we've that got one. a little night-dwelling carnivore. Okay. So far, okay. nothing outrageous, right? No. Plenty of those running around. Yeah, mm -hmm. millions, billions. They live and hunt in trees. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. still nothing outrageous. Okay. Now, these little tree-dwelling carnivores that are nocturnal, they, you know, seem to be a normal little animal, right? Wouldn't you agree? Nothing, nothing outrageous. So, yeah, it's no, pretty standard nothing. so far. Yeah. Pretty, pretty standard. Except the males of this species only live for 11 months. Mm, okay. Okay. Right. So that's still not crazy. It's okay. a relatively yeah. short life cycle. But for the last two weeks of their lives, they literally... Fuck themselves to death. <laughs> yep, this okay. is real. They will have sex nonstop, sometimes for up to 14 hours straight during mating season. They do nothing but slam. That's literally all they do for the last two weeks of their life. Their blood has so much testosterone coursing through the rest of their body that it, or sorry, their blood has so much testosterone coursing through their veins that it stops the functions of the rest of their body, causing them to literally fuck themselves to death. Their body shuts down because they are slamming so hard for two weeks that nothing but testosterone production what? can take place. Yep. Okay. okay. They Wild smash stuff. so hard that all of their fur <laughs> falls off. I mean, oh, they're God. literally, they're losing it. They start bleeding internally, Jeez. right? Yes, stay with what? me now. This is a real thing. Um, uh, they get gangrene because their limbs start to fall off. They start to rot, and they're just they're just going to pound town this whole time. <laughs> they get gangrene <laughs> going at it. because their limbs are rotting because they're just, like, stuck in place, and they're putting all the weight on it. Yep, yep, straight up. Everything is failing. Organs are failing, internal bleeding, <laughs> hair is falling out, and they're still just going to pound town. Dick's um, still good, firm, <clears throat> Dick's rock good. hard. Yeah, Dick's hard. Mm -hmm. um, they sp and, and at the end of this life cycle, where their, their bodies are literally disintegrating, yeah. until the moment they die, they spend every last second frantically, erratically, looking for another mate to keep humping. <laughs> and, then, and then they just collapse and fall down dead. Yeah, literally. That's this exactly, is they literally just fail. This is Pat and in his this, 20s. He made it. Uh, though. That's that is correct. You win. Game Thank over. You. All right. Okay. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> Moving on. Let's yeah. move on. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I do we have more or is this it? That's kind of it. It was okay. really all about the I love the, the build up. I, I love the the, uh, the the picture you painted in my mind as this thing slowly decayed and turned gangrene. But let me sum it up. Furious. Let me sum it up for you. Let me <laughs> sum it up for you. So you've got this, action. You've got this small nocturnal <laughs> animal, right? 
Uh-huh. It lives it, it lives in the treetops. You're like, oh, cool. Lives for 11 months, the male. You're like, yeah, not bad. Decent life cycle, not long, not short. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's just like go time. Just bam, 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 all day long. It's just humping itself literally to death. There's nothing but testosterone chemicals fueling every ounce of this animal, influencing its brain. Its body starts to fall apart. Its hair starts to fall off. Uh, it, it's, <laughs> this it is gets terrifying gangrene, for the females. It starts bleeding internally. I mean, literally, the animal disintegrates. That Ugh. is that is what we're talking about here. Yeah. Can you name it? This is this is for all of the female of this animal. I, I'm sorry that that God did this. <laughs> this sounds terrifying for them. <laughs> Do you want a little clue? I could give you a little little bitty clue. Uh, yeah, give me a clue because I can't picture anything except the Jagarundi, and I know that that's not it. <laughs> so, so this you, animal yeah. happens to live in Australia. And it's of the mammalian variety. Oh, I know what means, it is. Which mm-hmm. means it is a drop bear. Marsupial. Oh, nope, not a black uh, bear. Close. No, no, I said drop bear. It's a drop bear. Wait, that's bear. interesting. <laughs> are there are the only mammals in Australia marsupials? Correct, except for dingoes, pretty much, and oh, introduced wow. things. Yeah, got it. Well, damn. Uh, all right, it lives in trees. It hunts at night, uh, and then well, obviously it hunts all in the trees. Tree- yeah. It hunts in trees, all of the bizarre sexual activity. I mean, all it does is hump. It just humps. <laughs> all it does yeah. is it fucks till it dies. <laughs> uh, it's a marsupial. Ritep, why don't you go first? I'm sure yeah, you'll, you'll I mean, this is it. a, a tree guru, Avi. <laughs> a tree guru. You know yeah. what's funny is there is actually tree kangaroos. That's a real thing, Ritep. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I like tree guru much better. I don't know which it's, silly it's, Aussie named them first, but he totally should have called them tree gurus. It's called a portmanteau. Um, I'm good with English. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Okay, so we're looking at a marsupial. It's certainly not a dingo. It's not a thylacine. It's a tree kangaroo, uh, mate. It's kangaroo, tree kangaroo, but, but not a tree kangaroo. kangaroo. Uh, it's, uh, it's some sort of wallaby. It's some sort of uh, <laughs> some sort of tree wallaby. It's it's the southern <laughs> southern tree wallaby. These are good guesses, gentlemen. They really are. Tree guru just wins as my new favorite word. Sure um, this is an animal that very few people will have ever heard of. I mean, myself included. I know very little about them other than, you know, these wonderful humping facts. Um, it is a small marsupial that resembles a rodent known as the brown antichinus. Um, antichinus. So, okay. Yeah, very odd. Will will pull up a picture of one. Like I said, very rodent-like, but actually a marsupial. Oh it looks like um, uh, the the newly discovered. Um, what was that that they just discovered on that? The vol- volcano rat. The volcano the rat. Yeah. Yeah. It does kind of, but this there there are other pictures. They do some of them. You can see more marsupial <laughs> features and less rodent features. But mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, basically, it's a kangaroo rat that <laughs> humps itself to death. I mean, just a crazy, it's, bizarre life cycle. It's it's interesting. Oh, there we go. What is that? The pouch, or that's or? the pouch with little babies in it. Yeah. That's what that's what defines something as a marsupial, right? Is that pouch? Correct. Or, okay. Mm-hmm. So it's funny because I was envisioning a rodent, a rat, not not you, Pat, but I was envisioning oh. that this could potentially okay. be a rodent. But <laughs> then I was like, this is definitely a, what I was envisioning, and I was gonna say some type of like mouse or rat because the behavior is just despicable. And I would, I would imagine a rat to do nothing other than this. Um, <laughs> but wait, it looks so much like a rat, but it's a marsupial. Could, could this be a rat that evolved to become a marsupial, or did this evolve completely separately of a rodent? Yeah, good question. So convergent evolution, meaning oh. that two things needed to fill the same ecological niche, so they evolved to look the same, but they're completely unrelated. So it's okay. a marsupial that looks just like a rat. I mean, you put that next to a New York City rat, and you're like, I'm not sure, you know, I can barely tell the differences. But right. they have they are not branched off of the same evolutionary tree at all. They have evolved completely independently of each other and landed at this point in time to look very similar to one another because they both occupy the same ecological niche, and that's called convergent evolution. Wow. Uh, that is pretty cool. Uh, a good one with the brown antichinus. Uh, if any Brosners Ooh. can look us in the eye and tell us that they got that, I will send you a, a free scratch and stiff wild time sticker. <laughs> before yeah. before you pull this it's picture down, though, well, I got to give you props for this picture because 
it perfectly depicts uh, the beginning stages of what I was envisioning when Forrest was describing it going on its 11 month uh, or on its two, two week uh, sexual bender. This Front pump sash. Look at it. Yeah. I mean, Did, this is yeah. this is what it's doing. It's like one of the yeah. fucking wild ass gremlins running around, just humping, <laughs> mouth open. Great pick. Like, have you? I'm trying to think of a situation. Ritep, you you were definitely in a frat in college. There's no doubt in my mind. You, of course, he was. Yeah, look at you. Now imagine. I, I wasn't, but but I could imagine. <laughs> of course, he was. I mean, I'm trying to think of like for me, it's 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 like rugby locker room five minutes before you're taking the field where there, I mean, my <laughs> testosterone level is at its peak for what I am, which is, you know, a pretty meager human being. <laughs> like compare that to just having in like nothing but testosterone coursing through your veins. Like my brain in that yeah. point in time, when I'm about to take the pitch in a rugby field and I'm in the locker room with all the other guys and we're like, let's go. It's game time. We're going to kill them. It's like nothing I want to do, but kill someone. That's all that I can think of is kill. Yeah. And, uh, that's, that's what this little fucker has going on in his head for, for his entire life, basically. But for the last two weeks is just like, I have to, I have to bust a nut. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah. It's yes. just insane. It I've must seen, be brutal. I've seen guys like this at the gym. They're usually the ones that are, uh, roided up. They're very excited to be at the gym, and they're <laughs> aggressively talking to all the chicks who don't want anything to do with them. It's yeah. just well, well, they're one step away from this. <laughs> I'm thinking, too, uh, not to get too Christmas heavy, but, like, remember <laughs> when you were five and, and Santa was, you know, the thing, right? And you believed in right. Santa, and you wake up on Christmas morning and just, like, eyes open, and it's you're not groggy at all, right? You're just like, Goo. And you are so right. excited. Like, do you right. think that these mice, <laughs> these marsupials, <laughs> when they wake up on their 11-month birthday and they're just like, today's the day where it starts. Yeah. I'm going to do so. <laughs> nothing but hump for two weeks. I think they're Straight. just wild-eyed. Yeah, I think they're just exactly. It's Christmas morning. For <laughs> Nice, Will. <laughs> Dude, also, I mean, not to mention, think about the community in general. Like, the, the, the women, they're nervous when this time of year, when this starts happening. The children are watching these sexual escapades happen. Oh yeah. It, I mean, oh, yeah. It, this, the whole, the whole, this could be a children's book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be. Forrest, what's your favorite Christmas gift that you ever got? Everyone has one gift that they remember or holiday gift or Hanukkah gift or whatever. For sure. They remember getting where like you started your, your, your vision got blurry and you started <laughs> yep. losing your mind. Z zero question. Uh, my 10th wow. birthday, I got a Pee Wee 50 motorcycle, 50 cc little tiny motorbike uh. from my dad. And he took, took me outside and was like, all right, you know, gave me like three minutes of lessons. It was like, you know where the farm store is? And I was like, of course, it's three farms over. He's like, go get me a six pack. And it was just the <laughs> coolest, like the fucking, it was just everything, like a motorbike outside, no helmet. This is Africa we're talking about. There's no drinking age there. So 10 year olds buying beer is a thing. Um, and my dad like gave me cash and like, was just like, don't die, you know, cause I had to like get on the side of the main road and go get him beer. And it was just like, every part of that was the coolest thing that had ever happened to me. It up to that point in my life, and probably still. Well, so let's get to the real reason, Pat asked. Pat, what's yours? No, no, what's what's yours, Ritep? You go next. Yeah, yours next, Well, mine, mine is not nearly as manly or badass. Um, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was actually a gift that I gave somebody else, but it was intended for myself. She took it in the divorce. Um, it was a small... I was with Patrick when I got it. We were on this small... Island off the coast of uh, Seattle <laughs> called Bainbridge. Oh, yeah. We took a ferry yep. there and we ended up at this little town called Bainbridge and we were walking around and um, we went into this little shop and they had these little, uh, they were like little television sets that were hollowed out and then they had like a scene of like a snow like, globe inside. Yeah, like a snow globe, but it was like oh, mine cool. had a train that went around a town and it played Christmas music, and it lit up, and it had the antennas, and it was very nice. We had them shipped back to uh, back to L.A., and uh, again, I lost that one in the divorce, and it was very upsetting. But that was Stop my saying favorite. Saying the word gift. divorce, nobody <laughs> likes that. Um, <laughs> I, mine, was uh, a, mine was a Rolling Thunder GI Joe vehicle. It was three feet long. It could nice. fit like twenty guys in it. I opened it. I legit almost fainted. Like I, I was like, I can't. <laughs> 
<laughs> and couldn't see. And then my mom was like, okay, you got to go to church now. And I was just like, I like pretended I was sick. Like I did everything I could You're to get out of going but, to church. But church, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I had to sit in church for, you know, 70 minutes just literally <laughs> thinking about the rolling thunder the entire time. It was the <laughs> longest hour of my life. Boy. Very I feel like you had a question that I interrupted for us that you're going to ask Peter about his, his oh, Christmas Oh, no, gift. I was just going to point out, you know, I like to make fun of Peter, that the greatest Christmas gift feeling he's ever had was as an adult, not as a child no, getting given any kind of gift, but as a, as a full-grown adult buying himself something at the store. Yep, I don't, I don't, yeah. remember, uh, I don't remember too much from my childhood. I usually got yeah. uh, video game systems. It was fun. It was great. I remember the right. time spent with family during Christmas. As I said, I hate giving gifts. I hate receiving them. But when yeah. I buy one... It's, it's, it's easy to block out that time with Uncle Rod, who you later found out wasn't your real uncle, who did bad touch, right? Like, those are bad That's, times for you. You're going to get canceled, boy. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> is it time? It's time. It Ooh, is time. Yeah. And a rare occasion. What is it time for for us today? Battle Royale. <laughs> Yes. One of these days we'll get real sound effects. Not, not anytime soon, but no, one no, of these no, days. Definitely not. Okay, guys. So what this is this is a good one. It, it was submitted it by top uh, brofluencer, brosner, Daniel Cool. Brofluencer. <laughs> oh, Daniel Cool. That guy fucks. He fucks. He's, an, he's one yeah. of our he's like loyal Aussie yeah. listeners. I'm sure he's going to love this episode. He always loves when we talk about uh, Aussie. But he submitted this one the other day in the Discord. Uh, so you've got some new neighbors, and they're a nightmare. The absolute worst. They yeah. play loud music. They throw parties that they don't invite you to. Just a general nuisance, okay? You want them out, but you don't want to stoop to their level. Instead, your local yeah. zoologist says they'll give you access to any three animals you want to annoy Ooh. your neighbors. You can't cause oh, significant damage or inflict harm, but you can annoy the shit out of them. Snake oh, draft. That's good. I don't know how that works, but yeah. <laughs> okay. So what that's three good. animals wow, will you Daniel, annoy great. the hell out of your neighbors? Drive them out of town, out of the Phenomenal. country, out of the world. Phenomenal so, battle royale. Real quick, how, do we know how they're annoying us? Is it just the music and, and stuff like that? Do they have pets? Do they have dogs that bark? Stuff like that? Well, I mean, specifically, they're just playing loud music. They don't invite you to the parties. Okay. They're just a general nuisance. I mean, they, they let their dog shit in your yard. They're, they're throwing oh. cigarette butts in your yard uh, mm -hmm. from the parties. Mm -hmm. They're leaving plastic cups yeah, they're around. Awful. They're taking up okay. all the street parking with their... It's basically oh, like if Rob terrible. Gronkowski moved in next door. <laughs> okay. that's, that's what this is. That's I like that scenario because that means I'm rich. Uh, yeah. <laughs> True. But angry right. who, and annoyed. Who goes first, Peter? This is your, your call. Uh, well, how about, let's, Forrest, you go first on this one. Okay, sure. You know what? First pick, real easy pick for me, because I live in this personal hell on a daily basis. <laughs> if you want to annoy the shit out of your neighbors, not joking, got a letter <laughs> in my mailbox today, you get yourself peacocks. <laughs> Straight up, it's that simple. You want to upset your neighbors, you get peacocks. I can show you the letters to prove it. So I'm I'm going with the low hanging fruit. What well, do they do? Yeah. So like peacocks. how are they bothering your neighbors? What are they oh, complaining God, about? Just, so first of all, have you ever heard a peacock? So the, oh, the, yeah. the more beautiful the bird, the more awful its noise. The peacock <laughs> is the most beautiful bird, and every morning at dawn it goes. Jesus. Yeah, exactly, Rachap, for a long time. Then they will leave the property, they will go to the neighbor's house, they will fight their own reflections in the sliding glass doors. So, like, you know, just like banging at the door, constantly fighting their own reflection at the sliding glass door. They'll shit all over their porch. If they have anything like um, any bird feeder out, any small citrus or fruit trees, anything like that, they'll just go and peck the shit out of all of that. Um, yeah, they're just, they're just night, and then they won't leave. They'll just decide to roost at the neighbor's house. So they'll just like go up on his chimney and start shitting all over his <laughs> chimney and go to sleep. So yeah, peacock, just take it from me, take it's it from a, a guy pick. with peacocks. 
rescue peacocks, they're awful. Like, don't that, – that, you'll piss off any neighbor anywhere in the world, guaranteed. The, so shitting, the shitting is just the icing on the cake, too. Like, all the other shit, and then they go roost and shit all over everything. It's, Dude, the fighting themselves pick. in their reflection, the male peacock, when he goes to fight himself in the reflection. So in my neighbor's case, it's a sliding glass door. In my neighbor's guest case circa three years ago, it was his brand-new Tesla that was really shiny. And the peacock's <laughs> kicking the shit out of the side of his brand-new shiny Tesla, scratching it up. So, it's yeah, no, they're, they're awful. They're, they're, yeah, that was a huge apology. They're, they're terrible, terrible, terrible pets. So, yeah, <laughs> okay. leaving with peacocks. Okay. All right. It's a good one. Pat, well, Pat what do you got for your first All pick? Right. I am going to start with a howler monkey. I know I've been heavy on howler monkeys lately, but... You have. Here's my thought. <laughs> they, they're called Howler Monkey for a reason. Yeah. Yep. When they call out, it is one of the loudest sounds created by nature, 140 <laughs> decibels. Mm -hmm. That is louder than a packed NFL stadium, right? <laughs> okay. So yep. what I'm going to do is obviously I'm going to teach my monkey not to howl in the house. And then when I let it out back, uh, I'm just going to put earplugs in. Right. Smart. So I'll yeah. just be sitting at my desk working or headphones listening to some music. Meanwhile, my howler monkey is putting their speaker system to shame with <laughs> 140 <laughs> decibels of ear piercing sound directed into their pool party. That's good. Yeah. That's a good. Okay. I'll shut yeah. down that party quick. Yeah. All right. Nobody's enjoying that. What's up? You're up for two. All right. So, um, well, I, I was definitely going to call you both out on the fact that uh, your picks are going to be annoying not only your neighbors but yourselves as well. So, For sure. but, but Pat, Zero question. but Pat has uh, combated that with the uh, with the earplugs. So his neighbors also will probably be passing out earplugs at the party as a party favor. Um, my first pick is going to be a very fucking uh, nuisant swarm of yellow jackets many many <laughs> thousands okay. of yellow jackets and i of course will have the knowledge on how to control the yellow jackets and keep them away from the house the the nest will be in near their backyard just so like in the corner so that it only fucks with them outside it won't fuck That's with me pick. or my animals it okay. will but what's your second pick my second pick and uh because you mentioned the earplugs, I am safe to go with this pick. I'm going to go with roosters because I was in England one time and everybody has fucking roosters. And it's true. they fucking cock a doodle doodle. Doc cock a doodle doodle. Cock a doodle doodle. <laughs> At the fucking butt they are crack British of roosters. dawn every, every day without exception. And, uh, and it doesn't get dark until 11 p.m. there sometimes, and they're fucking doing it at 5 a.m. But uh, And the other thing is they're cheap, so if the neighbor decides to give his kid a BB gun to go after my roosters, I'll buy 100 more for okay. $25, and there will be a never-ending supply of roosters and yellow jackets. Okay. okay. All right. Not bad. I, Not bad. It's okay. That's good to start. Uh, I, so I've got, <laughs> I'm, I'm bothering one of their senses, right? I'm getting back at them via... Mm -hmm. Sound. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to pester their olfactory sense. I am going to create <laughs> smells with my Zorilla, <laughs> otherwise known as a striped polecat. Ah, uh, interesting. This is okay. known. You took my to skunk, which was my next. I I'm not going to pick it anymore. <laughs> I okay. won up to your skunk. <laughs> you so did. the Zorilla yeah. is known One to be skunk. the smelliest animal in the world. They release a horrific smell from their anal glands whenever they're threatened. Uh, but I will obviously teach my Zorilla to do it on command. It will direct the horrible goo uh, at the neighbor's fence line, um, and it's just going to be a train wreck. I mean, okay, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have a party, you know, you're gonna have a party on Tuesday night. Have fun with that. That'll smelly. do it. It's yeah, gonna be loud it. and smelly. That's pretty. That's pretty awful. Yep, that is pretty awful. Stole your idea, right. Forrest. What do you got? You did, yeah, you really did. I was coming in with just skunk, and then you not only stole it, but one-upped it. Um, but fortunately, in my back pocket, I had just the most awful pet that anyone could have. Um, I'm assuming that I'm living uphill from these neighbors. Uh, where I currently live, you know, I'm kind of on a slope, and my neighbors are more or less downhill from my house. Um, you know, I'm also lavishly wealthy in this scenario, so I live at yeah. the top. Yeah. Sure. Um, so instead of a swimming pool... 
I happen to have, you know, those infinity edge swimming pools where like the excess water yeah. goes over the edge. Right. Well, I have an infinity edge moat filled with hagfish that Ooh. are constantly producing the world's most <laughs> awful mucus and slime at the edge of my property <laughs> that is just r- sweeping down over the neighbor's house so that every time they even attempt to open their do- door, walk from their car, as we know, cars get stuck in this, from their car to their house, they're just, they're knee deep in hagfish slime. I mean, it's just, it's just awful. Okay. They're going to kill you. They're just going yeah. to send a hitman up the, you it's get all, a hitman for like five grand. I've seen forensic yeah, that's files. What, that's, what, that, that's my neighbor's <laughs> car right now. That's what's going on. <laughs> all right. Okay. So they can't drive anywhere, so they can't get away. Mm-hmm. You've yep. got your peacock screeching and they're trying yep. to get away, but their car's unusable. Yep. What, what, how are you going to round this out? Yeah, no, and, and you, took, you took the olfactory thing right out from under me. So, you know, instead, instead what I'm going to do is just have in that same hagfish pond is going to breed an incessant amount of mosquitoes so that no matter what, <laughs> at all times, oh, like, you know what it's That's like mean. when you go on a camping trip and you're like, God, I just fucking wish I hadn't gone camping because the mosquitoes are just ruining That's every mean. second of my life. I'm yeah. just going to have so, there's just going to be clouds, swarms of mosquitoes. Not, not with malaria, not, not with dengue fever, just right. your standard irritating as fuck mosquito and just yeah. bazillions of them. That's, that's it. good. That's and that's three. a nightmare. Uh, I think you might've won this one until now because my third Oof. pick is going to win this for me. Okay. There's nothing. There was a trend going around about a year or two ago. Uh, you guys probably remember this where people were dressing up like creepy clowns and just standing Ugh. in people's front yards. Do you guys remember this? I was waiting oh, for yeah. that. I was, yeah, I was so ready for that because I wanted to tackle a creepy <laughs> clown and beat the crap out of him. Oh, I was excited well, by it. In the town that my mom lives in, someone shot a creepy clown that was oh, standing in Oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in South yeah. Carolina. Yeah. Uh, and, and good on you, by yeah. the way. Yeah, totally. Don't stand in my that. yard. 100%. Idiot. Trying to scare my kids. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a, a page out of that notebook. And okay. I'm going to go for scare factor. So mm. smart. what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a pet aye, aye that Ooh, I will train. <laughs> They're proficient climbers. If, if Will's going to pull up a picture on the YouTube here of the aye, aye. They are arguably the creepiest animal in the world. You've got that long <laughs> finger, just a bizarre oh, yeah. looking face. And I'm going to train my aye, aye basically to climb up to their second story bedroom windows and use their long finger to just go tap, tap, tap on the window. Ooh, all night long. And when long. they pull no back kernel. the curtains, they see that. <laughs> That's a good, man, you got sound, you got smell, you got creepy. God, yeah. Being your neighbor would be terrible. Be worse than currently being my neighbor. <laughs> right. <laughs> all okay. right, so I think I've won, but Ratep, you might good. as well. Just go ahead. Absolutely not. Uh, I have yeah, yellow jacket ahead. bees. Uh, I forgot what my second pick was. You, you literally have garden variety yellow jackets and chickens currently. So <laughs> roosters. Continue. English yeah, roosters. roosters. Yeah. Yeah. Nice the hats. ones that say cock a doodle uh, Yeah, pro- very proper roosters. <laughs> yeah. And I will bring another bird into my uh, realm. And it is going to be... The equivalent of having a very mean, vicious looking. He's currently Googling types of bird. That's <laughs> no. what he's currently Googling. Yeah. Pitbull. B1 or, or another type of uh, vicious dog you might have in your yard uh, at all times. But I am going to have a farm. So at least 25 cassowaries roaming around my backyard next to the fence where their party will be. They can look at it. They will be terrified. They're five and a half feet tall. They weigh 90-ish pounds, and they will fucking be fighting and killing everybody. And by the way, <laughs> I will have them permitted, so there will be no legal trouble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Daniel yeah, Cool is going to be very go to offended DMV. by your picks because you just named every single Australian's backyard. Roosters, <laughs> yellow jackets, and cassowaries running around. He's well, like, yeah. mate, that's just what we have down here. And yeah. nobody's yeah. having fucking parties over here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> also, Daniel Cool is right. apparently Irish now, too. Yeah. Oh, mate. Where are my lucky oh, charms? My lucky charms, eh? All Everything right, turns so. into an Irish accent eventually. Yeah. Yeah, that's bad. All right, so to recap... <laughs> We have, uh, if, you, if you like this Battle Royale, the only way we know who won is for you to let us know in the iTunes or in the YouTube comments whether you vote for 
to who's who who do you not want to live next to? Is it my cacophony of peacocks, hagfish, and mosquitoes? Patrick's <laughs> incredible trifecta of howler monkeys, zorilla, which are basically African stinky skunks, or eye eyes that'll creep you out through your window. Yep. Or Peter's Garden Variety Australia Zoo, Garden which, variety, is, yeah. uh, <laughs> which is yellow jackets, roosters, and five foot tall birds, cassowaries. We're swarms will... of yellow jackets. No, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. Many it's roosters bad. and it's hundreds of cassowaries. It's it's awful. It's dangerous. I can tell you that much. That's right. It's dangerous yeah. just to live at your house. Nobody wants to come to that party. Uh, <laughs> You've ruined your own house. Um, <laughs> yeah, with your howler monkey. I don't know. What, what are you going to have? Noise canceling fucking earmuffs on all at all times. <laughs> all times. <laughs> so what should everyone do, Peter? Everyone's yeah, least everybody. favorite part of the Hit podcast up. is when we, we botch the ending. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shamelessly <laughs> self-promote ourselves. Yeah, well, I mean, go to the YouTube. Go to the video. That's the best spot because people know how to use that. Many people don't know how to use iTunes. If you don't, you can go to our website, thewildtimespodcast.com forward slash iTunes dash review. It'll show you how to leave a review on iTunes. Otherwise, just go to that YouTube, uh, which is uh, the wild times podcast.com forward slash YouTube. And if you just go to the wild times podcast.com, all the links to everything for it are there and join the discord where there are hundreds of brosners and wildlife and adventure enthusiasts hanging out, yeah. talking about all kinds of shit and Real spicy. Uh, yeah, it's real spicy. Yep, yeah. it's real fun, and that is at wildtimes.club. Foot. No, just kidding. Wildtimes.club. Go there. All right. Hey, that's it. Talk to you guys soon. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. Sayonara. Meh. <laughs>